So uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jakub Cheka, so I've been introduced. Uh, I work at Red Hat, at multi -arch, Fedora multi-arch team. Uh, I am Fedora and uh, GC, like Go and compiler. No, not the big time contributor to, to the compiler, but some. Uh, I maintain Go in Fedora, and, uh, and I'm basically responsible for the, for the compiler. There are some other con uh, co-maintainers, maintainers, but like most of them are in inactive, and I'm really the only person at the moment. Uh, we also have, uh, well, I'm also a member of the Fedora Go and Container Special Interest Groups, which we started last year, um, and that's from my introduction. Uh, we have Go in Fedora, if you haven't known. Uh, we have over 700 packages that are using a compiler and they are written in Go, or they are providing wrappers for, for, for the libraries and other stuff. Uh, they are on all architectures uh, that are currently supported except from the PowerPC 64-bit Big Endian and 31-bit uh, mainframe, which are all now dropped for our, I believe, from active releases. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> All the packages include all the cloud native stuff like Docker, Kubernetes, OpenShift Origin, Podman, and many, many, many more tools, etcd. Uh, and the really helpful is the GOSIC, which we started to help my attend this stuff. Uh, there is uh, Nicholas Meho, who's working on some improvements to the packaging of Go projects. And it closely tied to this container special interest group, uh, which most of the cloud native stuff is shipped with con in containers, so we are trying to get there all, on all of the architectures. So I covered some basics of, of Fedora, and I will now dive to the more interesting bits about the upstream Go. <laughs> like there are coming some, I would say, kind of big events uh, in this year. It's the release of Go 1.12, which will actually go out in February. Uh, it's already in Fedora Rawhide and what will be Fedora 30. And there will be also a release probably of Go 1.13. And there's some work already going on for Go 2. And I'm not sure if it will be released this year, but definitely the development process might be very interesting to you. And I will get in, uh, I will get in, uh, in the end how to get involved both in Fedora and in regular upstream. I will say small disclaimer, I'm not talking on behalf of Red Hat, and I'm not talking on behalf of Google, Go upstream, so this is my subjective uh, subjective talk, so don't, don't, don't trust me too much, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> Verify it and talk with the upstream to get really, if, it's, if the feature that I'll be talking about is really important to you, talk with the upstream. I will cover what's new or will be new in Go 1.12. As I said, it will be released probably really soon. It might be within weeks in February. Uh, I'm not aware on about any significant issues with it, so it should be on track for, for the release. And we have already have it in Fedora, as I said. And I will now go to some features in no particular, no particular order. There are definitely things that I will have missed that might be interesting to you, but I, I was trying to focus on things that are mostly interesting to as much people as possible. Uh, there is now a detector for 64-bit ARM Linux target, uh, which with, with, with inclusion to, with the AVS, uh, AWS, now providing the host, it might be very interesting for your applications to be able to, to run the race detector and eliminate as much as issues that might be there. But probably developing already on Intel and it depends. Maybe some workstation in the future, who knows. Uh, there is now Seago finally for the big and power PC. Uh, big and target is there for some time, but it lacked the support for the Seago which was kind of bummer for some applications. Unfortunately for Fedora, it's too late. We already dropped the backend on PowerPC there. There are new ports. Uh, there is Windows 32-bit uh, ARM port, and there landed backend on PowerPC AX port. Although it, it is not yet fully featured, there are missing bits as Seago 
and external linking and some others. And this is also the last version of Go that will support uh, Mac OS 10.10. .10. So you will need to update your Mac, your, your Mac. You'll probably be aware of how it will go. <laughs> Also, this is last version of Go that will support binary only packages. Uh, so there are packages that are only shipped as, a, as a binary artifacts. So you do not have source code. So if you are shipping proprietary like libraries where you are not sharing your source code, you are, you are out of luck with future releases of Go. Also, Go.12 will focus more on, on Go modules that got introduced in 1.11. Uh, all uh, there are little, little back fi bug fixes and improvements, and most notable parts are all the commands that are working with modules are now parallel safe, so you can write more automation about one single storage location that you have for all your modules or for modules for your project. Also, there are extensions to the metadata that are recorded for the module, and you can now specify which version of Go should be used to building your module. Go tool wet got deprecated now. You should now use Go wet. Uh, Go cache is now by default on and it's required. So you, your builds and tests will be cached. Go doc binary is now only server. You should use Go command doc for command line interfacing with Go, Go documentation. If you are not using your browser, of course. <laughs> uh, there are some changes to CEO on macOS. Uh, for some core libraries, the pointers will now be unit point typer instead of got pointer. And there is improved var uh, var uh, variable lifetime tracking, uh, which might result in finalizers getting run sooner than you might expect it in all the versions of Go. If it, if, it, if it will cause you any troubles, like the final errors run too soon, you can mark the var uh, variable uh, as always alive, but use it with caution. Along the optimization improvements, there is even more aggressive inlining, for even for nested calls. Uh, in some instances, uh, it might Again, cause you issues at runtime when you are not expecting that the function got inline. Uh, I actually ran into the issues uh, when rebuilding uh, Fedora packages and testing a new version of Go. And there is a project called uh, Go Local, like Go, Go Routine Local Storage. And there was some, uh, some parts of it are relying on it that the function do not get inlined. So there is uh, GC Pragma macro go or no inline that you can tag your function with, but do not really rely on it because it's not part of the language standard, it's an implementation detail, so be careful with that. Also, it's added a new flag for the go, go, go command, which you specify the version of language you are expecting or wanting. I believe this is not really useful at the moment, and it will be more uh, more useful with the possibly upcoming Go, dot, uh, uh, Go version 2. And I don't think it's really like that useful at the moment. We will see in the future. And especially for the compatibility checks. There is also some work that is kind of related to Go 2.2 and it's making, uh, making the code more, or at least the compiler internally, uh, more separate from the ABI and a call, so that the ABI can be changed with the version go uh, with the version two. I will delve into the go to in a bit further. There are improvements to the GC, uh, and there is there and also there should be more aggressive return of the of the memory to the operating system, especially on Linux, which will use now the MET med v3, releasing memory to kernel, which might not be observable because the kernel needs to reclaim the memory on its own. So you might see still the usage of the memory, although it's freed. 
there is new uh, Gojek Pack options that allow you to turn off all the CPU extensions that are used in standard library. So, so you can like actually measure, for example, how, how, how it gets slower if you do not use the extensions like, like vector instructions and stuff like this. There is now support, of, there will be now support for TLS, uh, TLS version 1.3. And this is like the highlight of the all feature for Go 1.12, in my opinion. There, are, like when you when you get access to the slides, there is a link to the whole change notes for that version. There are many more changes in the individual individual packages in the standard library, but I haven't seen anything really significant or game breaking. So now I will move to the what's known about the Go version 2. Uh, there are, uh, I will, for the context, uh, the Go version 1 uh, have compatibility promise so that the upstream won't break, uh, won't, uh, won't break the backwards compatibility. So if you had code that was possible to compile with version 1.1, you can still compile it now. Uh, and should work. It's not a binary or API promise, so if you, you will have to recompile all of the dependencies, but it's, it's taken care of by the Go tool, so you, know, you shouldn't really see that as an issue. Uh, there are plans for more breaking changes, or for bigger changes and possibly breaking changes for the next version of Go. Uh, there's plan to be more community driven, Actually, we are currently in phase we are, uh, that they are gathering more feedback. So you should definitely provide it if you are interested in the possible future changes. And you are kind of running out of time. Uh, the deadline for providing the feedback, or at least the official deadline, is end of, end of January. So you pro should provide it really soon. We will see what changes are coming there. There's a nice blog post with the overview. So what's going on? And there's currently proposed over 100 changes, smaller and medium sized, in the issue tracker of the Go, uh, Go project itself. So yeah, provide feedback so you do not so so your heard so your voice is not missed in, in this. And yeah, I believe that upstream is quite receptive to constructive feedback. So if you have any worries about the changes, go there and provide some feedback. There seems to be a quite bigger draft than just the individual changes, and it's especially focused on error and exception handling, which will introduce new keywords, it's check and handle, which will provide special ways for getting rid of the error idiom, which is kind of heavy nowadays, so you have a lot of writing, this should save, this, this should save a lot of writing for you. And there's also shaping proposal for the generics. So my, it's one of the features that is most missed by many people in Go. As I said previously, there already around it some changes that are not breaking for the detaching of the detaching of the implementation from the ABI account conventions. So there might be some changes uh, that allow us for more aggressive. Uh, more aggressive optimizations in function calls. So, uh, from the from the issue uh, from the issues uh, that are tracking the changes, I picked uh, pick up uh, picked few that I found really interesting and want to share with you. Uh, there is proposal to not allow uh, to not to to not allow. Uh, ignoring return value of a function. So you have to explicitly ignore it because currently you can do that and it can lead to some, uh, to some bugs that you, that you might miss, especially if the return value is error. So this is one of the, it's kind of part of the proposal for better, 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 better error handling, but it's not, it, it's kind of independent too. You can get one without the other. Uh, there is also a proposal that you could specify your own operators for the types. 
which is kind of a big change, but before the, the proposal proposes lots of constraints. So you cannot mutate, for example, the past uh, operands, and you cannot retype them. Uh, and for example, uh, unary operators will be defined by the binary operators, so it reduces, like, the, reduces the complexity scope. For, especially for the reader of the code. So you cannot do some crazy stuff that you can do in C++, for example. There's also a proposal to remove dot imports. Uh, so you cannot import the whole package to the current, uh, to current namespace. Uh, the main point, is, uh, main point of this proposal is so you, are, so you are explicit about that you are using functions from different package, which is kind of, I believe, kind of controversial proposal because it can save you a lot of writing if you can import those, import whole packages into the namespace. But on the other hand, it doesn't help with the readability because you do not know where, where the function is coming from. But yeah. Uh, there is now also proposal for error or panic at the integer overflow wraparound. So, so, <clears throat> so in many cases, this can, like the silent overflow and wraparound of integers variables can lead to some serious security bugs, especially in like uh, certificate handling and <coughs> such. And with this, you have, will have to be, you have to catch those issues if, if they come, you show up in your code. Other, issue, uh, other proposal that actually can help also with the over, over and wrap around is that the int and uint type should be arbitrary size. So basically the in, integer type could now hold any value and there is no issue with the wrap around. And it will be, uh, it will be a kind of resembles, for example, I believe the integers are handled in this way in like functional languages like Haskell. So you can really store any size of the uh, integer value in this, although there will be also keep the size type, so when you need explicitly sized integers, for example, for a building for syscalls and some low level stuff, you can still use them. But for gener generic code uh, and general code, it might be better to use the arbitrary size. So it prevents some, some serious, uh, serious issues. <clears throat> so this is for all the upcoming changes. I want to point you to, to some places where you can get involved, you know, either in the upstream or in Fedora. For upstream, you can definitely should check out, if you haven't yet, the GitHub mirror of the repository, where, which is used as an issue tracker for the development. Uh, also, there are two quite important mailing lists in the community of the Golang is Golang Nuts, which is user mailing list. So if you have like questions that are more user-centric, uh, basically all the usage of the compiler, you have some code that behaves in your opinion weirdly and you believe it's a bug, you can discuss it there. And there is Golang Devil, uh, Devil mailing list, which is uh, focused all solely on like development of the compiler itself. So if you have some feature that you wanted to propose, it might be good to run it first by the Go Nuts. So, you know, like somebody's interesting and it's not total, totally like irrelevant or stupid. And then you can try to raise some more serious discussion on going devil list or even just file issue in the mirror, uh, that on the GitHub mirror. For Fedora, if you are interesting, uh, if you are interested in helping maintain packages that we, are, uh, we, are, we have in Fedora or you are using uh, Fedora as your development platform. You are developing your application on Fedora Workstation. Uh, you might uh, consider joining Fedora Golang uh, RC channel on Freenode. So you can, you, you see something weird that you believe it's not gener generic compiler bug, but it's something that, that basically I did and I broke the Golang for you in the Workstation. You can discuss it there and ping me there. Uh, we have also mailing list for of, uh, Golang, uh, for Golang, so you can also post there. If IRC is not your, if you, if IRC is not your cup of uh, cup of uh, tea, 
And also, if you have some generic changes, like you want to ship your project in a, a, as a package, or any more like generic federal level stuff, like how we should do the packaging, like we are, if we are doing it wrong, in your opinion, and you want to raise some discussions, there is Fedora Devil List, which is centric mostly about generic development of the Fedora and packaging. And last part is we have the special interest group, and we have issue tracker for different changes that we are, we are planning in Fedora, especially on the packaging front, packaging the projects, changing the way how the RPMs are, how we are the bundling stuff. We are kind of kind of doubling, doubling on on the Golang module and GoGet command. So we're trying to separate uh, separate all the dependencies. Uh, it's kind of a hard job and not really sometimes not really worthwhile, especially if you have some packages that have like thousands, thousands of, pack of Go packages as dependencies. It's really tedious and really hard and sometimes even impossible. But yes, yeah, stop bar issue tracker if you think we, have, we are doing something wrong or you have some ideas. So thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? The basic one. If you said that Golang 2 will be not so much compatible, so you need to recompile. Okay, will it be possible to have it all them installed at the same time on a single machine? I believe so. It depends what mechanism you will choose, like for your installation. Yeah, no. Just asking the Golang 1 and Golang 2 packages. I, I believe that that might be might be the reason why they are proposing the lang flag. So you can actually set set the compiler to to like version one, and compile with the same compiler. But I'm not really sure what is exactly. Yeah, but I think nothing really. Nothing really like bars you from using like path manipulation to have both of them. Yeah, there may be also question for from Fedora distri uh, distribution point of view. If we want to provide, like there are federal modules now, if you want to provide like more version for one release, we are basically now doing like one release, like just the system compiler, which is used by the one release, like officially. I, I have some copy repositories, but I'm not maintaining them much. The problem is when it is modular system, it's not parallel installable. Yeah, it's kind of my reason why I haven't looked into that much because I do not see it that much value. Because mostly when you are developing something and you are really, like, the Go version is really important to you, you really want to have all the stuff installed parallelly, so you can switch by just blink of the eye. You do not need to run, like, DNF install, reinstall, whatever. So, we have no more questions? Yeah, thank you for your attention. Have a, have a nice one.